The following program is rated low, and staff improvement is important. Listen, how do you cook a cat? Hi, hi. No, no, I can't talk about cats because I've got some friends that are like hitties and stuff, and I want to hate them. postcard would you like to tell us how you know what how that came that about come look yeah. as a songwriter what i tend to do is look at things that are going around me and i've had a few friends who've been going through a number of bits of trouble with their relationships and marriages and stuff and it's a bit of a collage of what was happening so you tend to look at what's happening and try and paint a picture i guess in words about what you see and that that one came about not about a specific incident but a few things have been said to me and sort of come together to form this story which universally fitted all the situations so when did you release that um, one's been out for a while now, probably about 18 months. 18 months. Yeah. Oh, right. It's been a while. Right, so, Nick Phillips, where did you start? I started, I grew up around the Grange, Stafford area. Uh-huh. And uh, I had a school, I was travelling around in Bends, and I used to host a TV show up on Channel 7 called Saturday Jukebox, which was like a Saturday morning video show thing, and uh, I was managed by a guy called Jamie Dunn back in those days. And then, yeah, you know, Angie and I went and lived in Los Angeles, and we did my first album over there, I spent a few years living over there, and came back and done about five albums since, and always played around the southeast corner, which is my home base, but travelled a lot in between, and a uh, and, you know, mixture of being a local artist, slash songwriter, slash... Um, you know, record makers. So. And how many years have you been going? Eh? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> oh no, you're only. So you're talking about you're talking about Hitler's skull there before. <laughs> and I, yeah, and yet, the guy didn't look like a woman at the time. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Cross dresser maybe, <laughs> he but <didn't, laughs> he, did not. he would be the least woman looking. I can't believe that. Yeah, anyway. I don't know. Yeah, some of that. Yeah, waxing he did around the mo. That was a bit of a worry always. <laughs> Okay, so you've all been travelling around, you and Angie. Um, yes. You family too? Yeah, yeah, and we've got four kids. So. Four. four kids. Oh. When have you had time for that? Because I believe you do <laughs> over 300 shows a year. I yeah. saw that. Four, four commercial breaks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Angie, chocolates and diamond rings, Angie. Yes. <laughs> diamond rings, she married a musician. Poor girl. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, she's a musician in her own right she too. She's a musician, actress, and she's... Actually, we've just found out the last couple of days... In Italy, Angie's song, Life Like This, is number five in the Italy country charts. Oh, You're joking. We've got no idea how. But it's yeah, <laughs> and she's a, she sings in English. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, she, we just found that out. So we're trying to figure out exactly how at the moment. But she, both of us have signed with a, uh, a new digital record company recently called Cowbell Digital. And they're doing a lot of things internationally. And it's all very exciting. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was going to say that, Andy. Just, I just heard recently Angie signed a recording contract. Yeah, so, yeah, so yeah, it's good to see both of you. Yeah, yeah mate, it's a bit of a juggling act in how you do it, but we both love music and uh, the kids are right into um, that. And they're always first priority. Yeah. But um, like everyone has difficult jobs these days and juggling things, and that's just the way it goes. You know, well, at least we wake up and do our passion every day. <laughs> you know, the worst thing, I, my biggest nightmare would be waking up and having to go to a job where I hated to be. As much as, you know, the rewards can be difficult in the arts sometimes oh, yeah. in putting it all together. At least you wake up and you do what excites you. Yeah. And that to me is important. You struggle, but you can't blame anyone but yourself for the choices you make, that's for sure. The good thing with four kids is we put them out in the streets with hats, <laughs> and it's amazing how much you can bring in in a short period of time. Oh, yes, sure, Nick, sure, Nick, sure. <laughs> we, tried, we tried something similar with Leslie. We put her up on the corner there with a cowbell around her neck, but uh, made a good comedy show. <laughs> <laughs> I see you've had a nomination in the Independent Country Awards. What was that? Yeah, well, I got, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure. That one was in Mildura. Mm -hmm. I got a Golden Guitar nomination yes. um, a couple of years ago, too. They were mainly for uh, the song Postcard that was on, and then Not In This Life was, sorry, Not In This Life was the other song at um, the Golden Guitar. It was nice to get that. I've never really sat in a box. They've always said to me, in a way, problems over the years has been, what are you? I'm a singer-songwriter, and some songs deserve to be treated in a country mode, some in a folk mode, some in a rock mode. It depends what story you're telling. But country music seems 
sort of expanded a lot lately and embraced the singer-songwriter. So I haven't really, not so much me changing what I've done, but as country has grown, it's sort of, I've grown into the edge of it. Yeah. And um, to get a nomination in the Country Music Awards was great, but people could finally describe me a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah. Uh, as, as we know, though, uh, country, trying to define country now is getting to be very, very hard. It seems to cross over everything. Now. Well, I think the singer-songwriter thing really brings in a lot of those yeah. people, yes. and that's where it gets confusing because singer-songwriters do do, you know, different styles of music, as I say. Mm. And it's opening up country music to a lot of young kids as well, insofar as they might hear it through, like what Taylor Swift's doing with yeah. the, the pop crossover. Mm. But then they go on a journey and they find out the heritage of all those things, and it makes a lot of the old country stuff cool. Yes. So I yeah. think there's a big benefit to that. And you can either, I know there are purists out there who say no, country should be country, but to me, music's music. And Absolutely. Uh, the whole thing's a journey. It, yeah. Exactly. And people find their different tastes and what they like, and that's great. But if it means that the next generation coming through will discover who, who the past generations were. I mean, my listening heritage was more like the Jackson Browns, James Taylors, Cosby Stills, Nash Young, that type of thing. So it was never heart and soul country. But I still appreciated where that grew out of. And it was that cross between the blues and that real mm. down south American country music. These heritages stretch everywhere. Mm. Yeah, we were talking to Gary Cole from the Bobcats a couple of weeks yes. ago. And he was saying that if you listen, go back and listen to some of the Beatles stuff and some of the early uh, rock and roll, like in the 60s and 70s, yeah. you can actually pick the country in them. Oh, definitely. definitely. And, country and, and, blues and crossover was where rock and roll came from. Yeah, yeah you just take take one instrument out and put a steel guitar and then bang. It's, That's an, right. it's an instant, instant That's right. country hit. And a lot of times you take a song back to like just one acoustic guitar and it can be called anything. But, but the, the labelling of an of a artist often comes down to the production. Mm -hmm. You know, what style of instrumentation they use, what type of way the producer takes it. And, you know, whether that's a song or not, I don't know. I think, like, one of the greatest influences, of the, I think, of the modern day of music was George Martin. I mean, the way he shaped those early Beatle records set up so much. And everyone talks about the Beatles, which they were fantastic. Mm -hmm. But without George Martin, would they have had that sound? Yeah, you know, that's so, right. And so it's, it, all those things come into it, and that's what makes music wonderful, is there's no strict rules on how it comes about, or what you should like or not like. It's what touches that little thing inside you that goes, oh, that gave me a chill. Yeah. Okay, that, that, that brings me to the next question then. Why is it then you're so popular in China? It's not exactly an English-speaking nation. Mate, China was an accident. Oh, I got invited over there with the Queensland government to do a couple of art festivals. And at the time, one of the record companies were looking at working with a Western artist, and I ended up becoming the first Western artist to be signed to a mainland Chinese government-owned record company. And that's become a, a long journey, and, and we've had songs which have been on high rotation, and I'm now singing in Mandarin. I don't speak it fluently, but I mean it phonetically and all that stuff. <laughs> and um, <laughs> I have one phrase I say very a lot in China, which is du bui qi, chong wen, which means, <laughs> sorry, no Chinese. <laughs> it's, great. Oh, it's great and now with the record company I'm with at the moment we're actually in the process of finalizing a deal which makes us um, the only in, like independent record company be, to be associated with a major record company in China and we're going to be taking taking a lot more Western artists over and bringing Chinese artists over here as well and writing together and it's huge and and that and other things that go on over there like I, I have a lot to do with the Chinese Charity Federation and at the moment we're putting together a number of televised concerts over there in support of kids in the orphanages who suffer from cerebral palsy and we're actually looking for sponsors over here to get involved with those concerts because and people say well, what's China got to do with us China's growing so quickly and everything we use whether we have computers our microphones, our clothes, is being provided to our factories over there. And those factories are helping the society grow. But at the same time, they're stretching the fabric of the social network. And a lot of people are falling through those holes in the social network. And where the family structure used to hold all that together, people are moving away to work in these factories to provide us what we have. And the Charity Federation is having to pick up a lot of those people who fall through the cracks. And we feel that the opportunity we're getting with the music and the, the cultural experience, it's important that we support them back as much as we can and be able to work with the orphans in China is just fantastic. I, I never really thought of all, but the orphanages really is a big problem here in China. Um, well, the Charity Federation is a really well-run organisation. You know, I, the Zebo Orphanage, where I've been to a number of times now, it's a great-run place. But what they're doing is, like, to help kids with cerebral palsy, there's a worldwide recognised operation that release, uh, releases muscles around the spines. And they're running that as a, a, a scheme right across all of China. And so it's something that we can help in that's going to help thousands of kids, hopefully. And, you know, we're just trying to encourage businesses in that who make lots of money out of China to be involved with what we're doing. So that's part of the, the journey at the moment. So, Nick, if somebody was interested, how do they get in touch with you? Because oh. there might be somebody listening who would Please, love to contact you guys or else my, yep. my website is just Nick, N-I-K, Phillips, P-H-I-L-L-I-P-S dot com dot A-U. Just email me. Um, and yeah, we would love to have um, some companies involved in, in helping what we're doing there.